It's day nine of training camp here at the Centura Health Training Center, and the Broncos were back in full pads. The team's focus today was on two-minute drills. We'll hear from head coach Sean Payton and guard Quinn Miners. Plus, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one interview with Broncos' new cornerback, Fabian Moreau. All that and more coming up on Broncos Camp Daily. What's up, Broncos country? Thanks for tuning in for today's Broncos Camp Daily. I'm Sydney Jones alongside former Broncos safety Nick Ferguson and Broncos lead writer Eric Dalala. Guys, the main focus at practice today were two-minute drills. What were your main takeaways from those? Well, more efficiency from the offensive side of the ball. It hasn't really been that great for the offense thus far, but it was great to see those guys go out there, build a little confidence. And all you, it's like basketball. All you need was one ball to go in the hoop for this team. One guy catches a pass convert a first down, and it builds a lot of confidence in offense. Yeah, no question about it. I think you saw this team respond, the offense in particular. The first uh, situation did not go well, down six points, trying to score a touchdown to win the game. A couple of pre-snap penalties. We assume they're false starts from where we're standing on the field. And um, then a, a pick six at the end there as uh, Jonathan Harris gets his hand on the ball. Randy Gregory grabs it, runs into the end zone. So uh, not quite the start you want in terms of the two-minute drill, but these guys took it personally. Quinn Miners talked about how the offense realized that's unacceptable, that's not the standard. They go back out there, a different scenario, but this time they're able to move down the field, uh, kick a 52-yard field goal to quote-unquote tie the game at the end of regulation. And you like to see that progress. It's not going to be perfect right away, Nick, but um, you see these guys go out there. They're learning still. The installation's still going on. It's got to be uh, kind of a finely tuned machine. We're not quite there yet, but took a step there in that second situation. And we heard head coach Sean Payton talk about it in his press conference following today's practice and why these two-minute drills are so important to practice during training camp. Every game we watch, at the end of every half, there's a two-minute drill. At the end of every half, someone's in a two-minute to get a field goal before halftime, maybe a touchdown. And at the end of most games, there's a two-minute drill because most games are ending you know, within seven points. Um, so when the season's over and you look at that cut up, there's over 120, 130, 150 snaps of two minute offense and defense. And there might be 12 snaps of goal line offense and defense. So you got to practice it a little bit proportionate, you know, proportionately. And, and it's something that, you know, you, you kind of, the games are fast and, and you're in this quite a bit when you look at the course of a game. So I think it's important. It's something that we emphasize and, and we'll be on the same install schedule tomorrow. We also heard head coach Sean Payton talk about the offensive line's identity. And he said he really likes where that line is at and what they're doing at practice so far. What have you guys really seen from him over the past week? For me, it's uh, these guys just trying to get continuity with one another. I mean, this is a revamp offensive line. Another, a new guy at the left guard position, right tackle. And they haven't really been playing together, practicing together, because either guys are getting veteran days or there's some other family issues. But when these guys get together as a cohesive unit, you can see it starting to come together. And it's going to pay dividends for the Broncos in the run game and the pass game this season if all of those guys are thinking as one unit. Yeah, I mean, when this group is out there, it's a really good group. And I think you see that. These team period plays, especially the passing plays, might not be perfect in terms of the entire execution, but but Russell Wilson's got time back there. Yeah. I think a lot more time than we saw last year. It's not perfect every single play, but I do think you see a clean pocket a lot of the time. Uh, Russell's able to sit back there and make a decision, let some of these longer plays develop. Uh, they've been, I think, better than expected at this point in camp, especially when you've got Randy Gregory, Frank Clark, Nick Benito's looked good. Having those guys come after you They've stood up well to that pressure, and, and Zach Allen too in the middle there. I mean, he's been a, he's been a force along the defensive line. So the fact that they've been able to give Russell Wilson time has been a good sign. And with the run game, I mean, we'll have to see how that goes, right? That's that's something that I don't know if you'll know until they start playing preseason snaps, so you can really get after it. But um, encouraging so far, I think. Definitely, and we've heard head coach Sean Payton talk about the run game and how he said it needs to be in this offense's DNA. And today we heard guard Quinn Miners talk about setting the tone for the run game. Yeah, I think everything's going really well. You know, obviously in training camp, you have a lot of time together. So, you know, hanging out in between meetings, spending a lot of time in our meetings, communicating, and then also on the field in between periods. We set the tone, um, you know, in the run game. And it's, it's our job to get the movement and to, uh, at the end of the day, influence or make the coach want to call more runs because that's a lot of fun for us. 
Now moving on to the defense, guys, I feel like it's safe to say that the secondary has kind of been the main point, main talking point of camp so far. They've been a really impressive group. What have you, you guys seen from them? For me, once again, it goes back to cohesion. And there's a lot of familiarity with this defense because a lot of guys like Justin Simmons, they played in the defense similar with this, you know, Vic Fangio and Coach Evero. And then now you got Vance coming in and it's just kind of everyone getting a feel for the other person. And I love the depth in the secondary and watching these guys go out on every single possession and compete. And one thing I love, and I have to say this about what I'm seeing in this training camp that I didn't see in years past, we see a lot of ones versus ones. And that's only gonna make our offense that much better. But I have to tell you, this defense is rounding into form, and I can't wait to see them in game action. Yeah, I mean, we're out there watching one-on-ones, Nick, and you're, you're cheering, you're clapping you when uh, <laughs> when Pat Sertan has a nice pass breakup uh, against Corlin Sutton. I mean, I think, of course, Pat highlights that group, right. right? And we've talked about him a lot, but you saw his physicality on display today. He came downhill and would have just absolutely blown up a running back there. Mm -hmm. And then in a one-on-one in -on -one drill, it seems like Corlin Sutton's got a step on him, and boom, Pat's got that closing speed, yes. doesn't panic, is able to get that pass breakup. Um, so it all starts with him, but I think at the other cornerback positions, whether it's Damari Mathis, uh, Riley Moss when he comes back, obviously Fabian Moreau coming in, there's some options there at corner, and then we've heard them talk about Kwan Williams and how he good at, how good he is in the slot. So uh, it's just an impressive group all the way around. You talk about cohesion, Nick, but talent's pretty helpful too. Yeah, it, it, it definitely <laughs> helps if you are a defensive coach or offensive coach to have that type of talent that you can just kind of throw out there and just kind of be interchangeable. I mean, we saw when Kareem Jackson was in there with Justin Simmons looking like they did last year because Caden, I think he seemed like he was laboring with an ankle injury. But once again, I, I look at this situation and I say, well, there's so many things that you can do defensively based on talent, which helps with the cohesion. So it's going to be great to watch these guys hunt this year. Definitely. And I had a chance to catch up with the newest addition to that secondary, Fabian Moreau. Fabian, I know you've only been at practice for about three days now, so how are things going so far? It's going pretty well. I mean, just getting adjusted to the, the schedule and the players, my team, new teammates, just meeting everybody and getting used to the organization. Yeah, how's that transition been like for you? And are you, you adjusting to this defense yet? Yeah, it's been pretty smooth. Um, just getting the terminology down, uh, learning the guys, learning how they play, learning what's expected, and just learning uh, Coach Vance uh, Joseph learning what he wants to do, and yeah, it's been good. You know, I know it's early, but what do you think about the secondary, and how do you hope to see your role kind of evolve here? I mean, they're elite. I mean, I think I think Pat's one of the best corners in the league. Uh, Simmons definitely one of the best safeties in the league. I mean, they got a lot of good players. So just wanting to come in, do my job, and wherever I'm expected to just help out. You mentioned Pat Sertan. What were your impressions of him, you know, coming in, and now that you've seen him in person, what do you think of him now? Well, it's funny because we're, we're from the same area. Um, when I transitioned to corner, I, I used to talk to his dad. So just seeing him play and seeing him in person and seeing how he moves, and it's just, like I say, he's elite. So it's, it's cool. I know head coach Sean Payton in his press conference the other day talked about you as a player, and he said he knows exactly what he's going to get from you as a player. For Broncos fans who don't know a ton about your game, what are the Broncos getting with you? Uh, I'm just a guy that does my job, man do what they expected and I want to win. So I'm out here just doing the best for my teammates and that's what they could expect. I know it's year seven for you in your career. So how are you approaching training camp at this point? Uh, this is my seventh time. They all been different. So this one's a little different because I just came in unprepared. So, but it's, it's just getting used to it. Just having fun, man. And just playing ball. Well, Fabian, appreciate you taking the time to talk today and welcome to Broncos country. Thank you. And as we wrap up today's show, I wanted to send it to you guys and ask you guys, over the past you know week, who has really surprised you out there? Has there been a standout in your eyes? Well, for me, it's got to be Nick Benito. Uh, came in a lot of expectation last year. Didn't really live up to him because he was just a guy that loved to get up the field. But now we're seeing you know, how much work he put in last year and during the offseason. He has that explosion, that burst. But the one thing that I'm really impressed with him is that he's now playing both the run and the pass. And when you do that, that ensures confidence in the coaches that they can put you on the field for four consecutive downs. And for me, I'm really happy for him that he's starting to turn the corner. 
Yeah, Nick's been really good. I've been impressed with him too. I caught up with him the other day. That'll be uh, on DenverBroncos.com, I think Monday, so people can keep an eye out for that. But a little plug there while we while Love we get it. the chance. <laughs> um, the guy who stood out to me, he, he's a starter, but Javante Williams. I mean, I, I thought that he was going to take some time coming back here. I didn't know how much he would practice coming into the season. My expectations weren't super high necessarily. Just thought it'd take a few months, maybe even a year for him to get back to being that guy. He's looked explosive. He's cutting out here. He's running through people. He looks like Javante did before Javante got hurt. And I just, I mean, we heard Sean Payton say it several times this offseason that he expected that, but I needed to see it with my own eyes. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Javante Williams, I'm expecting big things from him. Yeah, well, I like both of those picks, Nick Benito and Javante Williams. Guys, we're only one week out from the first preseason game, so it'll be the first time we're able to see this team in action down there in Arizona. That'll be it for Broncos Camp Daily. I'm Sydney Jones alongside Nick Ferguson and Eric Dalala.